Yeah, so this is the part why I ask you for shots, dog. Bro, right, but that's not consistent, though. It's, that's the problem. <laughs> you think mine consistent? Yeah. Come on, here. <laughs> oh, they, uh oh. I just murdered Four. somebody. Oh, Raj. I think that's the last one we should hit down there, man. No, cause I, I need to redeem myself, dog. Like that literally would have killed somebody on that range. Yeah. Over there. Okay. All right. All right. How much insurance does this real this, this real talk have? Like, but bro, you didn't there? tell me that this the the grass was sloped this way though. You felt that, right? No. You felt that? No, Rod. Right. Hit it straight this time. <laughs> like I hit mine. Hit it straight. Yeah. Hey yo. Welcome back to Range Talk with me, your host, Roger Steele. Today's immensely overqualified guest is NFL legend Larry Fitzgerald. Some of y'all may know him for what he did on the field. Some of y'all may know him for what he's doing off the field. But me, I know him as the homie, which is kind of a flex, but worth saying because a lot of successful people are low-key weird as hell. You ask them for a little bit of money, and uh, they treat you like you said something about their mama. But not Larry. He just say no and keep rolling with the conversation and I respect that. Uh, today we talked about some deep stuff, you know, his football legacy, how golf has impacted his life, his responsibilities as a successful black man and helping create more success, and has he officially retired? Or is he gonna take the Bruno Mars route? I'ma leave the door open. Didn't know your boy was talented like that, did you? Uh, so sit back and relax, uh, this is Range Talk. Yeah. Mr. Fitzgerald, Rod, I up, appreciate man? you, baby. No, it's an honor, honor to be here with you, bro. Yes, honor. sir. Honor. Yes, yeah. sir. So look, man, uh, you know, it was uh, it was tough getting you out here first and foremost because you know I know that you all over the world. You you dedicating your time to all these different people, and it was hard for me to even ask you to be out here. So let me just get my thank yous out of the way so we could just you know get into some of this real stuff, you know. But this is different because you know. Everybody else that I done did a range talk with so far, that was my first time meeting them and chopping it up with them. But now this is like, I get to talk to a homie for a little bit. Yeah. So I'm gonna make sure that I keep some of uh, our like, you know, more intimate conversations, you know, between me and would, you, Michael. I would appreciate that. I know, I know, cause you got great things. But you remember the first time we met Larry? Yeah, I do. It was down in uh, Augusta, Georgia, right before we played uh, Sage Valley. And I, I was on the putting green and came over and introduced myself to you. and. Um, I just remember you being, you know, very authentic and easy going down to earth and um, not a very good negotiator on strokes on the first tee. I, I know, I know, I noticed all of those things immediately, um, you know, upon meeting you, but, uh, you know, you've gotten better. You've gotten yeah. better. You only you, you give me, uh, you know, I still hustle you today on the strokes, but it's, it's, it is what it is. It is. People do good things for their friends, I've noticed. Bro. But I, I gotta tell you this, I don't know if I ever told you this story though, but but you were supposed to play with us the day before, right? Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. So look, we get to Sage Valley, is is me and Kelly, we pull up to the course, and apparently you told them last minute that you weren't gonna be there, so your name is still on the list, right? <laughs> so we get to Sage Valley, I'm walking through the clubhouse and I'm like, yo, why is all these people like looking at me like I'm, you know, like something that I'm not? Like I, you know, people just staring at me, whispering a little bit. I'm like, yo, what's going on? And so then we get out onto the course and then uh I figure out that they think that I'm you. You know what I mean? No, but so, you kind of understand that when you walk to the club in Chicago, you know what I'm saying? How to, you know how the ladies be looking, <laughs> asking questions about who you are and where you're from. And you, you, you understand, but it was different when you walk into the golf course. I, I, I get it. I get oh, it. So look, these people think that I'm Larry, dog. So it get, it gets so bad. Now I'm over here trying to pretend like I'm Larry a little bit. Like I'm trying to walk a little taller. I'm like, bro, got me by a good four, five inches. <laughs> trying to walk a little taller. You know what I mean? Put a little more extra bass in my voice. You know. So we get to the end of the round, we walking through the clubhouse about to leave, and this black dude walk up to me and he like, man, I just want to tell you I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of you. And I'm like, man, this is like, uh, this is probably the most mixed I've ever been about talking to people because I'm disappointed that I'm never going to meet his expectations. But on the other side of it, I'm enjoying the clout. You know what I mean? And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, man, I just spent the day in Larry's shoes and this is amazing. And then when you showed up the next day, I saw that same dude and then he was afraid to make eye contact with me. So I knew that, you know, I had just let him down by being myself. That was a, <laughs> that was a tough thing for me to kind of stomach. So our relationship for me, it, was, it started off a little rocky. I had a little resentment, you know what I mean? <laughs> without, even, without even doing nothing, I was already in a hole. You know, I was already a liar, so you know. You know, I could kind of sense that on the third tee shot when I hit that drive. And yeah. I thought I hit it real good. Yeah. And then you flew me by 25 yards yeah. on, on the fly. And, 
I said, that's, that's some hostility in that swing. Bro, there's I was like, Matt, I ain't Larry, but yeah. I'm Roger, yeah. though. You know what I mean? I'm Roger, though. Yeah. You know? I'm somebody. You know? Uh, but, man, so I got to ask you, everybody that's watching this episode right now, they got one question, dog. Are you retired? No, I'm not retired. You're not retired? Nah, I don't believe, I don't believe in using the word retirement. <laughs> I'm 38 years old. I got, I got a long life to live and a lot more to do in terms of my foundation and my business associations and just just living and working. And uh, I don't like to use the word retirement. So you just don't believe in that term? No, nah, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't suit me. It doesn't, it doesn't fit me in, in the stage of life that I'm in. Ooh, wee. Yeah. So, I mean, so technically you're saying that you still like game ready. If something was to happen, somebody would run up on you, you could still handle that situation. No, I'm not saying that. No, I'm you, game ready right so, here. So you're going so, you to see so how I, game ready so, I am later this afternoon. So if I came up on you right now, though, you can handle that still? You? Yes, no problem. No problem. Why you not moving, dog? Come on, man. <laughs> Gosh. I'm not flinching for no engineers, man. Come on, now. Hey, bro, come on, chill, dog. <laughs> chill, chill. You think I could have made it in the NFL? I mean, all yeah, things. If you would have, if you would have shifted your focus to that at an earlier age and really committed to it the same way you commit to anything else, I mean, you're great. You're great at what you do now. Okay. And you wouldn't be great unless you put the work in that you put in. And so, I mean, I, there's no, there's no doubt in my mind you got that ability to be great at whatever you do. I love you for that, yeah, dog. No, no doubt. Show, show me your swing a little bit, though. Let these people see what you're working with. You know. Mm -hmm. But man. Yeah, you're not gonna get no four side with me throwing it at the flag <laughs> like that, dog. So I mean I know I know you, you know, you're not talking as much football these days, but I still gotta ask you a couple of questions about, you know, yeah. your career. You know, a lot of people say you the great one of the greatest receivers of all times. You know what I mean? I believe that. How do you, you know, how do you feel about people that make those claims about you? You know, I don't really put too much stock in um, what people think of my career, honestly. You know, I'm, I'm very satisfied with what I was able to accomplish and some of the relationships I was able to build over those years. Um, there's nothing I would change about my career. Um, everything happened exactly the way it, it was supposed to happen. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy with that. And I, I, the reason I don't get into the best and this and that, that it doesn't matter. Um, one day I, I aspire to be able to get into the Hall of Fame in Canton. Right. And last I checked, every single bus that's in there, over 300 of them, are all the same specifications in size, width, and height. Um, and mine will be no different if I'm able to be lucky enough to get in one day. So, I mean, it, it, it really is no point into getting into all of that. It's always so subjective. And, you know, I'm just glad I could be a part of the NFL and, um, you know, something I always dreamed about doing. Right. And so then, as you reflect back over your career, though, like, are there any accomplishments? Are there any moments that stand out to you as far as, like, uh, things that, that really moved you and made you proud of, of what you were doing at the time? Absolutely. Now, hands down, the, 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 the best thing that ever happened to me in national football was winning the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. I was able to, to win it with my good friend Eli Manning, um, you know, because it, it embodies so much more than just blocking, catching, tackling and you know throwing the football it's about what you're able to do in the community and at the end of the day people are not going to remember how many yards i had and how many touchdowns i caught like that's just not something that matters but the impact that you're able to have on the community and the younger generation coming behind you is, is really what leaves the indelible mark and that's something i'm very proud of yeah and so then when you're thinking about the impact that you want your legacy to have you know in football when you're thinking about players in the game and just athletes in general yeah. what's something that you hope that you inspire for like generations to come through what you've accomplished on the field well just to be well-rounded you know um you know i think you you look at some of the great guys that come and not only be great football players like like some of my mentors and Jerome Bettis and Curtis Martin and um, and Junior Bridgman and people who have not only been really great at what they've done but transitioned to, to other great things in their lives. So it's not like a one-trick pony. They're, they're, they're versatile, um, they're pliable, they can do a lot of different things and, uh, and I think that's something I, I try to model myself in. Right, right. Man, so now man, on to this golf thing, dog. Yep. You know? Ooh wee. Oh we. So so when golf into the, the into the chat for you, dog. So originally my dad's been playing golf for over 40 years in yeah. the Twin Cities area and, and so like my first introduction to golf was him playing the his his hood skin games, you know, the and hood skin games. Ball, balls uh, you know, <laughs> you know, seeing people seeing <laughs> 
seeing balls falling out of people's uh, pants legs and right, stuff like kinda, that. You're kind of good at that a little and, bit. And, and, and you ain't dad, pulled that on me before, though, and, are you? And my dad telling me, don't don't, don't find his ball, you know, when me and my brother out there forecatting because he, <laughs> he's down two for three to play. Uh, you know, so I was introduced to a game that I wasn't all that familiar with that I see now, you yeah, know, on TV. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it gave me a great appreciation for, for the game and the dedication that's required because my dad put a lot of time into it. And actually, the first time I ever touched the club was with Tiger Woods. He did the first tee program up in Minneapolis at Hiawatha Golf Club. And my dad was one of the journalists covering the event and got me a picture with him. And what? I got to meet him. And uh, very similar to the, to the picture you took with him in Chicago. How old were um, you at that time? I was, it was, this was in... 1996, I would say, uh, maybe. 96? Yeah, I was, I was probably like, I was probably 11 or 12 years old. 11 or 12 years yeah. old. Yeah, and so, like, just seeing, you know, an African-American man, um, you know, do what he was on the cusp of doing and, and how down to earth and cool he was and took the time to, you know, interact with all the kids and introduce us to the game, it meant a lot. But I, I still, the game was too slow for me. It so is. at that age, I still wanted to play basketball, football, and, and do all the things everybody else in the neighborhood was doing. And right. so um, I didn't really pick it up until I, I turned, like, 30 years old, 29, 30, is when I really started making a true commitment to it. And what was it that switched the, like, what was it that flipped the switch for you to actually start giving it your time? You had been exposed to it for so yeah. long. My boy Andre Roberts, he plays for the, for the L.A. Chargers. And uh, he was my teammate here in Arizona, and he was like, "Fitz, man, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta pick up this game." And he had played a couple times, and he was like, "I got this tournament, charity tournament. We gotta go over and play." I hit balls everywhere in the houses and people's <laughs> pools, but like I hit like three or four shots, like on that sweet spot. And I tell people, there's nothing better in life than a well compressed golf ball going in the direction that you wanted to go in. Like there's n there's no better feeling in life, and Bro. like I experienced that. Out of the 150 shots I hit, <laughs> like two times, you know what I'm saying? And that really got me hooked. And I just really started to become dedicated. I started practicing and started playing. And um, that's kind of where it so, all So how out. was you balancing? So once you fell in love with there golf. There was no balance. Like, I was, I was, fall, I, I fell like head over heels for her, man. Like I was all the way in, man. Every day. I mean, I would rush out of practice to the golf course every day. What? And then we had practice meetings at eight. I'd be on the range hitting balls for an hour before I go to work. Like it was, it was truly a, an obsession. It still is an obsession, but I've, I've got better, I got better handle of it now. Bro, yeah. that's, bro, I remember one time we was in, uh, I, I think we was in Nashville mm -hmm. and we was eating breakfast and you told me, you was like, man, if I ever, if there ever came a reason that I couldn't play golf, there's really no more reason for me to be here. Oh man, I, I really do feel like that, man. It's like, it's, <laughs> It's the great escape. I mean, it, the game is taking me, you know, to six different continents to play. I, yeah. I played with literally royalty, you know, um, across the world. I, I played with some of the most amazing, influential people you can ever imagine. And like, it's just opened my eyes to a whole new world that I didn't even know existed. Um, yeah. And then you learn about the business of golf. And, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just been such a great experience for me over the last uh, nine years that I, you know, it's just, it's become an integral part of my life. Yeah, yeah. Let me see you hit some of these scoring clubs, dog. All right. Let me see some. I'm still trying to assess how many shots I'm gonna give you later today. No, you've already agreed on it. Right? I didn't agree to nothing, like, dog. You are a man of principle out here. I'm a man of principle. I'm not gonna let but, you bully like, me you, into. For you I'm not gonna to let you bully me into taking my money, after dog. You, after you've already agreed, you can't renegotiate. That's not how it works. Bro, that's that's how I work right now. It's my show, dog. That look like, bro, we might just have to play head up, baby. You Maybe. striking the ball too good. Now, you know ball striking is, is, is not my thing. It's, you know, it's the putting and the chipping that really. Yeah, that, that, more, so more if you striking the good, I, I don't really feel like I, you know, it's not a fair fight at that point. You got too many tools <laughs> at, that, at that point. So, I mean, back to that, like, most interesting and most influential people in the world. I mean, just flex on me real quick. Tell me some of your, you know, most influential people that you come across in the game of golf. I mean, you, it's, it's a lot of people, but this is the one thing I do say. Um, golf, to me, is not about where you're playing. It's about who you're playing with. Right. Like, me and you and, my, and Andre and Pat P, we could go and play a municipal down the street, and there's potholes in the in the fairways and the greens is running at, at six and we having a good time like that's that's heavenly to me right, right right that's better than going to a top 10 golf course in the world and playing with with guys that i really have no commonalities or interests that that we share and so like 
like golf is about who you, who you experience it with and, I, and, I, and, I, and I love that that it's able to connect people on a much deeper level because golf is different than me and you you know going and grabbing a bite to eat at lunch is that lunch is only going to last 45 minutes to an hour on a golf course is the best 45 minute a best four hour interview you could ever have exactly you know you get to really know what somebody's about you get to learn about their temperament they hit a ball over the trees and are they are they mad at the caddy like yeah. the caddy didn't have anything to do with that swing. He you gave, trash. He gave, he gave you the club that he thought that you would be able to execute, but you were you were unable to execute. It. Now you take it out on him. Right? Like, are you a blame? Are you a blame placer? Like we right. don't like that. You right. Know? So you just learn a lot of things about how people are. Hey, bro, playing golf with me. What, what you think you didn't deduce about like me as a person? Now that we done played golf a few times, that you're that you're a competitor. Um, that you're that you're a thinking man. Like you think your way around the golf course, even though you are able to bully it with power. Like you, you, you understand like your strengths around yeah. the golf course, and I think that you that you understand your strengths in, in, in life as well. So I think there's some, some similarities there. This boy working hard to get these four shots off me, no, dog. You no, know, no, bro, no, come no. on, these compliments no. is not gonna get no. these four shots, dog. <laughs> but no, so so let's talk about some some real stuff though, as it pertains to like us being black men in golf. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you feel is the opportunity with the game, right? So like, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to advocate for people of all walks of life, but especially people that have accomplished things and they're, you know, minority to come into the sport because it's like, a, like you said, it's a whole different world. I consider golf like its own language. You know what I mean? You learn how to play this game. It's like you, you're able to connect with people on a different frequency. Like I've had connections around basketball, around sports, but like, if I start talking golf, that boy, he invited me over to dinner now. Yeah. I want you to meet my kids, yeah. man. You know yeah. what I mean? So so what's really like the opportunity for us is, is black men coming into the sport. What can we really do here? And then how can we like kind of impact the game further, you know? Well, you know, you grew up in, in the inner city, similar to the idea. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, golf was not readily available and accessible to us for the most part. Even right. though my dad played, your dad played. If our parents didn't play, it's not something that probably would even been on our radar. Exactly. Um, and all the things that golf has brought to us now in our adult lives are, are things we would have missed. You know, right. um, it's something that we want to one day, you want to give to your kids and I want to give my children that experience. But um, I, I think it's just, it, it's, a, it's a great connector. I mean, there's, not, there's no other sport or activity that raises more money for charity in the world than golf. I, right. mean, I don't know what that number is, but I know it's got to be in the hundreds of millions of dollars that golf raises. Um, right. Um, just the camaraderie and the experiences, the things that golf brings, um, it's, it's, it's no other game can do that. And um, like it's, it literally, is, it's really ch changed my life, man, yeah. in, in, a, in a lot of positive ways. And, and I look at what you're doing. Um, you know, you don't have, you didn't have to conform or change who you were. And people love you, and they follow you, and they and they and you inspire people. When I watch your videos, you know, I, I, you get me thinking about what things differently, and that's what it's about. Is it's not about, you know, always sticking to what your thought process is, but also learning from other people. And golf, golf teaches that. And, you know, just watching what J.R. Smith is doing. Yeah. You know, that's that's inspirational, man. Like now he went and made hundreds of million dollars playing basketball, but his education was that important. And he used golf to be able to go bridge the gap between education. Like, what is that telling young African-American men? That you can you can do everything, you can do it all. Right. Um, and so like those messages are so important to be told. And I'm so happy that, that they're being, you know, put into the public for, for people to look to. Yeah, and I think that it's like, it's, it's all about like setting yourself up to experience new beginnings yeah. too, right? And I think that, you know, when, when, when people have success in life, I think they get into this mind frame of like, I have have to do things that I'm good at because I'm good at this one thing. I must be good at everything. And I think that that scares people away from the game because this, like, I, this is one of the hardest things. It is the, no, it's not one of the, it is the hardest sport in, 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 in the world to perfect. Yeah. Because it, because like I, I was born, I was, I was bigger, faster, stronger, better eye hand coordination than most. Just yeah. coming out of the womb. I was out born the with womb. those gifts. Yeah, you was, you and was so three that up. gave me a stronger inclination to be able to play a sport, right? right? But golf, I don't care how fast or strong or quick or like if you don't put the work in, if you don't practice the timing and the mechanics of the golf swing, all that power is going to do is, is help you hit it in the pools. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it ain't going to help you hit, hit it straight. You know what I'm saying? You got to put that work in. And I think golf is like the ultimate test of like uh, of your your resolve because it's going to definitely test it. You know, right. when I first started playing, as you talk about it early, you know, you always say two, three years, you're going to be trash. And that is true. Like, I was trash, bro. I, 
I'm a, I can't tell you how many times a boy be like, yo, Fitz, you putting for an eight, bro. Pick that up, man. What are you doing, bro? Like, Shut up. Yeah, hey, Shut up. Hey, I'm getting better. You know what I'm saying? So uh, this game will test you. It will test your resolve. Yeah. And so, you know, when, when, when I'm looking at, you know, bringing different people into the sport, what's kind of like the, the message? And first of all, is that a part of your mission to, like, get a bunch of people into the sport? You know, how are you going about advocating for golf? Like, you know, with all of the athletes that you interface with and things like that, is that like a part of your goal? Well, absolutely. Golf is something that I'm going to play for the rest of my life, God willing. And, you know, my kids will be able to play with it. Like, it's, it's even strengthening the relationship that I have with my own father, which I'm already close with. But the time that we spent on the golf course over the last two years, it's only strengthened us and, and deepened our bond, you know. Yeah. So, like, it, it, it's so much deeper um, than just the game itself. It's about the relationships we, we go back to. And... Um, you know, working with the First Tee program, you know, doing some of the things that I do, um, working with PGA Reach, it's uh, the, the PGA's charitable arm that does a lot of work across the nation to, to bring inclusive, uh, you know, to bring, to bring, makes the game more inclusive. And, you know, so like organizations like that is something I'm really committed to and I'm going to continue to do that. Yeah. And so like outside of golf, like what's kind of next for you? What's like the next chapter? I know you, you know, you're not retiring from nothing, but I mean, what's some of the things that you kind of like picking up the ball with? Well, I mean, I've, I've, been, I've loved to be able to have, you know, some much more time with my children. Right. You know, being able to be at all their practices and at their games. And, like, I can see the relationship with my kids has grown. Because, you know, you're always – playing sports is a very selfish endeavor, right? You yeah. know, I have to work out. I have to get to bed on time. I have to eat right. You know, all of these things that you have to do for your pursuit, right? And now you can put your family – first which has been which has been rewarding um also being involved in you know different business ventures has been very very uh, rewarding for me just learning growing uh, doing things that i have not done you know over the last 20 years working muscles that i hadn't worked you know <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, being able to join the board of, of dick sporting goods you know just being able to see from an organizational perspective you know how you can change the plight um, of people uh, in their communities from either you know, hiring practices or diversity and inclusion initiatives, you know, so just being able to learn and see all of those things has been a lot of fun. You know, also being able to be much more hands on with my foundation work, mm -hmm. um, you know, really be able to, to go find grassroots organizations that embody some of the principles that you stand for. Right. You know, so all of those things are, are, are things I really leaned in heavily on. And, and golf is like propelling you deeper into all of those those for different sure. spheres. For sure, because golf is able to connect. You know, we put a charity event on together, you know, to raise proceeds from my from my Larry Fitzgerald Foundation and business people are coming to play. They want to get involved. Um, I can I can get involved in their business like it's it's, it's so it's reciprocal. And, and, I, and I really enjoy that. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I think that you know this about me, though, but I, I do consider you like a friend and a mentor, man, like you. You know, you help me process things. You challenge me to grow in ways that sometimes are very uncomfortable for me to, that, you know, and I don't trust a lot of people when, when I'm trying to decide how I navigate life. But I think that like the way that you understand, you know, being a black man and understand success at a certain level, like, you know, I appreciate you putting the time and effort into our relationship. And so when one of the things that I picked up from you is that like, there's an obligation that we have to give back. You know what I mean? There's an obligation that we have to to impact others and, and, and do do right by others and give opportunities to others when you see that, you know, they they this far away, like let's let's kind of close that gap. Like talk to me about like your mentality around, you know, even relationships like ours. You know, what what's kind of going through your mind when you allocate time to stuff like this? So when I look back, you know, on, on my maturation process as, as becoming an adult. Like, there were so many people who played an integral role in helping me not only develop as an athlete but as a human being that never were in it for any other reason but to see Larry Fitzgerald reach his full potential. And I think that you have to understand, like, not everything that you do is going to be for your personal benefit, your gain, yeah. but it's the right thing to do. Um, it's a moral obligation that you must have to help people. Um, and I look at the relationships that I've developed with, with, with the younger teammates or, um, you know, like our friendship that, that we have is like, it's important to me that you do well. Like when I see, you know, your new Nike deal or your Callaway deal or the photo shoot um, um, with Trap Golf and the clothing line, like that makes me so happy, man. It makes me so happy because um, you and, and Wayno and, and, and like are doing something that really is, is, is impacting lives. And that that's like, 
that just gives me so much motivation to, to, to try to do more like that because so many people poured into my life. I wouldn't be able to do it if, if, if those people hadn't sacrificed for me. Yeah. So that, that's important. And, you know, I know you're going to do the same thing for people coming behind you. I might. No, no, you will. I might. You will. I send you. I send you. <laughs> I mean, you've been very generous with the strokes, man. So, so I know. I know and let's it's, stop today, I dog. I know it's in there deep down, deep down, <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> I still love you. <laughs> Yo, show me some of these. Show me some of these shots, dog. All right. Show me some of these swings. So, what you working on with your game right now, baby? Um, I just been struggling a little bit off the tee, but uh -huh. that's that's something I've always struggled with. The short game and iron play has been has been really solid of late, um, you know. But I just got to be able to get off the tee. And, yeah. Uh, I see that driver with that cover head on it. Yeah. And I'm unenthused about taking that cover head off of that driver. Cut on, but I'm gonna do it for you though. I'm gonna undress it for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Set it up for you. But look, I gotta ask you a, a more controversial question, dog. Yep. You know, um, it's a lot of articles that have been published. You know, as you sit here and ask me for strokes mm -hmm. about like, you know, what's up with your index, dog? Like, you know, you you going around, you gangsting these little pro am events. You know what I mean? You over here whooping people, AT and T, one with Annika. Like, what's I mean? Like, let's 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 have a let's be real about some of these allegations. Like, are they true? No, they're not true. Anybody that's ever played with me can can. Uh tell you that I'm legitimately about a six six handicap. Like uh -huh. There's days that I can shoot, you know, low 70s yeah. and I have it going on. And there's days I can shoot in the 90s and I never know, you know, which Larry's going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> I never know which guy going to show up. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the master at the, the, the 35, 47, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I, I got a lot of those in my bag. And, uh, and so that's what that's what keeps me where I'm at. But it's all over the T-ball. I just I just struggle being able to keep it on the rails. Yeah, you know. let me can, can I just watch a couple dog. Maybe yeah. I got some tips for you. Right. You know what I mean? All and right. look, all I'm gonna say is just make sure that you uh make sure that you uh hit these truthfully. Cause I'm tired of you fishing for these shots. <laughs> There's no need for it, baby. You know what I mean? I hear you. Let me see something, man. Yeah, so this is the part why I asked you for shots, dog. Now that that was lucky. Why? You know why was that lucky, though? Cause I, you know, I. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna tee this one up for you, Mr. Fitzgerald. Could you please just show me one more? Man, like. Man, this Callaway equipment not bad, bro. Come on, uh, bro. Hey, you you be think getting it for free though? You know what I'm saying? Well, bro, like, you think I would I, lie to you though? No, I'm just saying, but it's it's easy for you to play with it when it's free. Nah, you know the saying? only way, the only reason I slid in Callaway DMs is because I already was playing their stuff. Oh no. Oh, nah, no. see, you oh, did no. that on purpose, dog. Nah, no, that's. See, that's the dispersion though. You see that? <laughs> like that's a that's a football. Larry whip. is over here trying to sell this six so hard. No, I'm just. He's trying to sell this six so hard. <laughs> and that's that's why I got that's why I keep it in the bag. You know, Come that, on. I, All right, last one, last one, last one. So talk to me. What's the crossover between football and golf from a preparedness and a, com a competition perspective? You know, there's not really a lot of similarities. Really? No, because you don't, you don't pull nothing from football and bring it over to golf. The competitiveness, right? The, yeah. the, the desire to be better and improve. You have to have that. But football is a reactionary sport. Yeah. I never in my life have thought about how I'm going to catch this football when it's coming to me. You know, I just see the ball and I attack it and I catch it. Right. And golf, you know, you're looking at it, okay, yeah, you know, the grain is growing into me. You know, the wind is a little bit off the right. Um, you know, the pin is in the back. I don't want to be long. There's desert back there. Like, all these things are going through your mind as you're preparing for the shot. In football, you don't have any of that. It's just, it's just react. Be a playmaker. See the ball, attack the ball. You know, golf, there's just so much more time to think about things and yeah. overanalyze. And, like, it's, but you, you know, probably find a lot of parallels between golf and life, though. 100%. Yeah. 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 I mean, because every decision that you make, you can find a pro or a con for everything that you do. Exactly. Um, you know, there's always an obstacle or an objective. And, you know, somebody could say something to you and it could change the way you think about that. You exactly. Know? So, like, golf and life definitely have a lot of parallels. Yeah. Show me one more real All quick. Right.
Yes, sir. Bro, I can't give you no shots, dog. I can't, like, bro, I can't, just because you got bro. that in the tank, I can't give you nothing, bro. Right, but that's not consistent, though. It's, that's the problem. Consistent. You think mine consistent? Yeah. Come on, here. Come on. I've seen, I seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it live in action, unfortunately. And it cost me. <laughs> hey, but, you know, one thing, last thing I probably got to ask you before you get up out of here, though, is, uh, you know, when the next time am I going to get, like, a Larry Fitzgerald experience? Because I don't know if you know this, but, like, whenever you take me somewhere, like, my social media stuff go crazy. So, like, I be, like, planning these little clout, these little clout <laughs> jumps. I call them little clout jumps, you know what I mean? Like, I know Larry got me two times this year. I'm trying to map out my little calendar. I'm like, I know I got two little clout jumps, you know what I mean? Maybe sometime, you know what I mean? When, 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 could, when can I get back on the books, dog? Now, I really would love to take you and, and Hooksy. Um down the down the hoopy man i think you guys will really enjoy it it's down in uh it's, it's an hour outside of savannah georgia one of my favorite places in the world bro and uh i'm, I'm gonna check with your schedule in march to see see if you can make it happen oh, oh, they, oh, oh. i just murdered oh. somebody oh raj i think that's the last one we should hit down there man no cause I, I need to redeem myself dog but you need to hit it over there though but bro if i like that literally would have killed somebody on that range. Yeah. Over there. Okay. All right. All right. Hey, can we we gonna cut that hey, one out? How, no how much insurance does this real this, this real talk have? Like, do it's, this zero? range talk? We got all the money in the world, baby. Come on, I could kill. I hit two people down there, dog. You right, know what I mean? Keep it over here on the right, man. All right. Yeah, that, that, but bro, you there? didn't tell me that this the the grass was sloped this way though. You felt that, right? No. You felt that? No, Rod. Right. Hit it straight this time. <laughs> like I hit mine. Hit it straight. <laughs> this man want to take four shots off me, man. It's gonna break a window, but hey, nobody gonna get killed though, which is good. You don't like that one? No, that was cool. I mean, but you was aiming, you was aiming at that white flag. So based on what we saw today, you know I can't give you no shots. You already agreed on the shots. All right, though. I can't give you no shot. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Ohubi, yeah. Appreciate you for having me, man. Man, I appreciate you, dog. Yeah. I appreciate the time. Absolutely. So you could go get back to saving the world and everything, <laughs> and uh, you know I will catch up with you at a hoop. A hoop, you promise? That's a that's my word. That's your word. That's my word. Y'all heard it here first, folks. I'll be posting clout chasing at a hoopy sometime in a couple months. <laughs> Uh, so there you have it. Football is not for me, but golf is for everybody. And also, never be in a rush to put labels on things. You know, retirement, shmishmayament. Uh, but more importantly, if you're watching this video, you likely play golf and thus life is giving you some form of success. You will likely not be able to compare to Larry in any other way, but you can be like him if you just remember to pay it forward. And invite me on all your dope golf trips. Thank y'all for checking out Range Talk.